So uh, what we have here is a 27 year old female that was transferred in from an outside uh, medical center. Um, she actually was asymptomatic, but in early pregnancy, um, they were looking to just do like the initial ultrasound and her dates were uncertain. And so they did a quantitative serum to try and see if she was over the ultrasound threshold um, because it, she was maybe in that range based on the timing and uh, ultimately found to have 70,000 on the beta HCG. So we're already thinking uh, down a particular, particular line. This is the outside um, ultrasound. And um, so what we see is kind of an, an unusual looking, maybe gestational sac with a whole bunch of serpiginous structures surrounding it. It's not the typical appearance of, uh, say, a complete mole with the snowstorm or anything like that. Um, but, uh, and there's just a couple more ultrasound images showing again, lots of serpiginous uh, structures, which I believe I have a Doppler here. Um, no definite any, uh, fetal material, but maybe some sort of quasi gestational sac. And then lots of this ends up being very vascular. So we're thinking along the lines of uh, some sort of a, a molar pregnancy. Um, and we did end up doing an MRI on this patient. Um, and we did the MRI with contrast because after a lot of discussion, because we were already, she was going to go to surgery, but there was concern based on the ultrasound imaging um, that they had called that it was potentially also ectopic. So the concern was for an ectopic molar pregnancy, um, which is exceedingly rare. Um, and so we went, we mostly did the MR for localization. Um, and so you can see in coronal here, there's uh, the, uh, the uterus and then sort of eccentrically located toward the right cornu. Um, there's uh, an area that looks like it may be sort of a partial gestational sac, um, with some T2 bright surrounding um, area. Uh, and that uh, here's, here's our delay coronal uh, post. And so it's, it's actually washing out on earlier uh, arterial phase imaging. This was highly enhancing and then it washed out because it's very highly vascular. Um, so on, uh, on axial images here, you see uh, with fat suppression, you've got again, sort of maybe a gestational um, sac-like area with this T2 hyper-intense region surrounding it and then some flow voids um, that correlate with uh, what we saw in the ultrasound earlier. Um, this is just an axial post-con. I think this is venous phase. Um, so you see a little more contrast sort of in the, in the surrounding area. Um, and then here's our, our high resolution, either a space or cube kind of a sequence. And this one I like a lot because you can see that it's not just high T2, this area surrounding the, the central area, which is more frankly um, fluid filled, are actually tiny, tiny microcysts. Um, and I don't, I only have representative images for this one right here ready to show, but um, as you scrolled through it, you could tell that this whole area surrounding it was, was microcystic. Um, and then this, uh, this sagittal image nicely shows all these serpiginous flow voids going to the right cornu. Um, and so we have path correlation on this one. Um, and uh, the, so it was indeed a partial mole with near complete invasion um, through the myometrium. And you can see that as you go back to like this, this, this essentially goes to the, the surface. Um, but they, they said it basically got right to it and they didn't actually notice anything going through it um, on, the, on the final uh, microscopic path. Can you show the coronal? Yes. Um, like it looked like there was some stranding in the like the fat in the left lower quadrant, or this, is that? Oh, just go go to the next one, the fat set. That one, or oh, that's the contrast enhance. This is contrast enhance. Yes. In the left lower quadrant, there's like a little it looks a little messy right there. What is that? Is that independent or just? I'm just we're just seeing partial. Um, that I think is. I think we're partial voluming. Uh, we do pretty thick slabs for these coronals uh, oh. because we've got a pretty high field of view. And so um, I think you're getting some of the, uh, the vasculature surround uh, feeding this, like the sigmoid as it dives down. I apologize. Um, that may not be the, the best and most representative image. Um, but it, it's, it was pretty clean over here on like our, um, our fat suppressed images. Cool. 
So th these these are things you don't see very much. And here you can see how uh, how vascular the uh, the actual tumor is and how it goes nearly to the surface, even on even on the section it grows. So this was. was was there any um, talk about re removing it without removing the whole uterus or it was already thought to be invasive? Like you guys already called it invasive? So there was a lot of discussion um, between the surgeon and the patient uh, about different avenues and potential um, ways to go. We, we'd called it correctly, I believe. And then the patient, I believe, had had either three or four successful pregnancies previously and ultimately decided um, that you know, this was the definitive option rather than potentially having tissue left behind um, that, that, uh, that this was the preferred. Um, but uh, I do believe that was discussed. So corneal ectopics are really uncommon. Uh, the paper that I just briefly looked at again, just now in radiographic said they're about 1%. Um, and then the, the partial moles often look quite different than the complete moles that we're all very familiar with. And so this kind of odd ultrasound appearance with Highly vascular and serpiginous feeding structures is uh, is actually fairly typical of those. This is like a perfect AIRP case. Yeah, I actually did take this to ARP. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's where it came from. I'll be honest. 